Now I want to I want to finish off with something that I've been meaning to do for a long time, and we really have to do today. So if you stick with me here, this is something that we have to do because unfortunately I've looked it up, and unless it's in Hebrew, it's almost impossible to find this topic. And I've been meaning to do it for months. It just never gets to it. Yeah, if you want, I'll order you one and uh, you give me the money. It's not, yes. it's not big. I was going to... Uh, yeah. Because uh, I want to yeah, read good the English so that way I understand what I'm reading. So, now that we know what Hashem means by Korbanot, what is the Korbanot in our, in our generation? It's our prayers. What gets us to get our prayers answered? We know we need to, need it to be genuine. What gets our tshuva to be taken seriously when we're serious? Mm -hmm. Now we need to know what gets us away from Hashem. What gets Hashem to say, this guy's lost. This guy's ruining himself. This guy's committing suicide every day. Now we've already talked about Chilul Hashem in the past. We've talked about Shabbat. We've touched a little bit about wasting seed. But not enough. And unfortunately on the internet in English, there's not enough of it. So whether it's for you guys that are sitting in front of me, married or single, or it's for anyone that's watching it, is a really big need for someone to go over some of the things about wasting seed. Because there are only two types of people. There's this guy that reached out to me the other day. And Miskent, he's in a big problem right now. He's married for 13 years, but he just realized that he's not allowed to marry a non-Jew. Hashem is real, and the Torah is real. And he started doing tshuva, but he's still stuck in this situation. So he's marrying a non-Jew. He has a couple of kids with her. But he wants to do tshuva. And the reform conversion that his wife did means absolutely zero. Mm. And she confirmed it with him when she told him, listen, I'm uh, never going to keep any of the mitzvot that you're doing right now, I'm not interested at all. Why is she not interested in it? Because the Judaism that she saw was a joke. She saw reform. She saw freaking uh, people giving bar mitzvahs to dogs. <laughs> putting tefillin on them. Why would she take that seriously? Even Christianity is better than that. Mm -hmm. At least they don't mock Hashem. It's idol worship, but they don't mock Hashem. They don't know it's idol worship. They don't intentionally go do it because it's idol worship, but the reality of it is it is. Church is actually still better than reform and conservative. Because at least they don't mock the Torah. They go against it, but they don't mock it. So this woman, this poor woman, came from a different religion. She saw reform. She thinks that's Judaism. She sees them giving bar, bar mitzvahs to dogs. Of course she doesn't want to do it. She sees the spiritual leader is a group of immodest women wearing mini skirts and short t-shirts or a homosexual. Yeah. Who wants to be part of this? But that's what she thinks Judaism is, Miskina. That's what she thinks Judaism is. So I don't blame her. So now we have to rework their whole thing. So now, a situation like that has several problems. The obvious problem is that we're not allowed to intermarry. We're not allowed to be with non-Jews. This is an obvious problem we've talked about in the past. Someone that wants to guarantee themselves to pretty much destroy their connection with Hashem is going to intermarry. Someone that wants a connection with Hashem is going to fix that problem. But that's not what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the bigger problem. The problem that affects many, many more people. The problem that affects everyone. Everyone here and everyone in the world, including the Goyim. And that's wasting seed. Gum a brit. Now, of course, the Jews are obligated with the mitzvah of protecting the brit much more than goyim. But the goyim still are not allowed to waste seed. I haven't found one source that says that they are allowed to waste seed. How do I know? How do I know that wasting seed is not only one of the foundations of this world? foundations of this world 
but everyone's obligated. Two sources. From the Torah, from Hashem's mouth himself. In Parashat Noach, there was no Judaism yet. That's why all the Goim are considered, if they're righteous Goim, they're considered Bnei Noach. The sons of Noach, Noahides. Hashem gave Noach seven mitzvot, seven laws that the entire world has to comply with. When we got the Torah, we had more. We added many more to them. But the seven Noahide laws are really seven that Hashem specifically told us and all of the mitzvot out of the 613 that are common sense. Like, for example, respecting your parents. That's not part of the seven laws of Noah. But of course, whether you're Jewish or not Jewish, you have to respect your parents. It's common sense. So anything that's common sense, both Jews and non-Jews have to keep. Jews actually have a mitzvah. It's part of the Ten Commandments and part of the 613 mitzvot. But the non-Jews have to know that this is part of the Torah. They have to do it. So before we had Judaism, before we had the Torah that we have today, Hashem saw an evil, wicked generation. They stole, they raped, they bestiality, being with animals, all types of disaster. But Chazal says in the Zohar, and also in the Gemara, that the thing that took it over the edge, that made Hashem just destroy them, the wasting seed. How do we know this in verses? After Hashem destroyed the world, destroyed everything, only Noah's family was left and Og Melech HaBashan, Og the giant. That's it, no one else was left. No, nothing. Or any animals, obviously, that were in the uh, ark. The ark. <laughs> then Hashem gives Noah the laws. And here he says this. In chapter 9, Parashat Noach, verse 6. Shofech dam a'adam ba'adam damo yishafech, ki b'tselem Elohim asa et ha'adam. It says, whoever sheds, sheds blood of a man, within a man, his blood will be spilled. Because in the image of God, he made man. So, spills blood, we, know, we immediately know that's murder. But it's not just blood, it's blood of a man. Okay, so we know it's his blood. But then it says, within a man. Shofech dam adam ba'adam. The, the blood of a man within a man. Mm, wasting seed. It's wasting seed, my friends. The blood within a man, the blood of a man within a man, is your seed. It's sperm. His blood, damoy shapech. Wasting seed was not acceptable even at the days of Noah. That's why Shem destroyed the world. And that's why everyone is obligated, Goim and Jews. Another source. Judah was one of the 12 tribes, one of the most imp important men that ever lived. We were called Yehudim after his name, Yehuda, because he admitted his mistake with Tamar. But before Tamar came in and became his wife, she married Two, out of, two of his sons, Er and Onan. Again, this is before we received the Torah. Before we received the Torah. We didn't receive the Torah for hundreds of years later. So they're allowed to be with two... No, no. She first ma uh, married Er, and then Onan. Er died, and then she married Onan, and then Onan died. Why did Hashem kill both of them? It specifically says it here. Because they wasted seed. They didn't want to have, get her pregnant. So they would waste the seed. They would have the semen go outside of the body. They wanted to have fun. Like they say in this generation, this wicked generation that we live in. They wanted to have fun. 
So they want to keep her pretty. They don't want to ruin our body. They want to have a shifcha, you know, somebody on the side that brings kids, is the baby oven. And they wanted her. She was so beautiful. They wanted to keep her beautiful. So they married her. First guy married her. Wasted seed. Shem killed him. Instantly. No second thoughts. This no is, second chance. This is well, whose name? Where was uh, yeah. This is the two sons. The two sons of... Uh, Judah. 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 And again, this is before Judaism. This is before the Torah. El. <clears throat> Wasted seed, Hashem killed him. It says specifically. It says in the verse. <clears throat> Onan did the same thing. Married her, because, you know, Judah didn't know that, that this first son died because he was wicked. He thought he was righteous. He just thought, okay, he died. Okay, so there was a mitzvah in those days that if uh, I... If, uh, um, if a brother died without bringing children to his wife, or to his wife, then it was a mitzvah to marry his wife and having the children pretty much be counted as if it's his brother's children. So he married her. He did the mitzvah. But he also wasn't interested in doing what Hashem wants. What does Hashem wants? The first mitzvah we get in the Torah is pu'u bu, bring children to the world. First mitzvah. He wasn't interested. He wasn't interested. He was interested in, in having fun. So what did Hashem do? Hashem killed him also. Before Judaism. Before we got the entire Torah. So we already know that Hashem means business when it comes down to wasting seed. This is what the Torah says about it in the Gemara and the Zohar. There's over 40 different sources. I'll try to name them when I can. But we need to know this, and whoever is watching this needs to know all of this. So hold on to your chairs, or some of this stuff is pretty rough. First of all, if we notice, in the world today, unfortunately, and all throughout times, There is a uh, a lot of different types of idol worship, Abu Dazara. It says in the days of idol worship, people will consciously channel energy and forces of evil. They would use Abu Dazara to create evil. And usually to do these things, there's some type of fluid that is necessary. And that's why you see people that worship idols or people that uh, worship the Satan, you know, satanic people. It's either blood or it's semen, is what they use to this day. So this is part of the reason why it's a problem in regards to idol worship. Also it says that anyone that wastes seed should know part of the seed, this is, you could, you could find this out scientifically, part of the seed, part of the sperm comes from your brain which is sent down the spine. So when a person spills his seed, he's actually wasting part of his brain, which lowers his overall function and his brain functionality and hurts his memory. Next, a person's emotions are thrown totally out of balance. This is why people that are pogema brit, people that uh, waste seed, usually have a hard time controlling their temper. They usually get mad or depressed very quickly, they get sad very quickly, they go into depression, and they don't have much self-confidence usually. Also causes premature boldness. I'm just giving you the basics, this is not even the hard stuff yet. Causes boldness or strange hair growth. Hair growing in weird places. Someone that's waste seed cannot uh, loses his ability to receive to perceive kedusha. He has a very difficult time learning Torah and doing mitzvot. It's a very hard time to understanding the stuff. Every time he wastes seed, those seeds are neshamot. He's creating souls, 
And each one of those neshamot is considered his child. But since they realize that they came to this world without a body, they get very, very angry. And they take revenge against him. Through his life and especially after this life. So after the person's life in this world is over, first there's the cemetery. When they go to bury him, there's alachot in Yerushalayim and in, in Israel that they, uh, uh, a man's children are not allowed to come, go to his uh, funeral. Why? Because in case he wasted seed in his life, there's fear that a, uh, those, uh, those demons that he created will kill his kids. And the amount of torture that they put him through after he leaves this world is, uh, is never-ending. Those souls take revenge against their father, causing him many problems. They also put crazy thoughts in his mind. So, for example, when you're thinking in the middle, you're serious about praying, and all of a sudden you, have a, all of a sudden you remember this girl you met 30 years ago. That's coming from that. It's not a coincidence. It's very easy to become an idol worshiper or denying God altogether. Again, coming from the same source, which is from those bad souls. In Midrash Agadol, Parashat Vayeshev, Rabbi Yochanan says, All those who waste seed are punishable by death. Rav Ami said, It's as if he sheds blood. Rav Ashi says, It's as if he worships strange gods, strange deities. Zohar, Parashat Bereshit, talks about the evil of uh, the... Uh, generation of Noah says there were many evil men in those days but their faith was not sealed until they started wasting seed also says in the Masechet Shabbat Ma'am Masechet Shabbat page 41 the Zohar in Parasat Vayeshev says spilling seed is more severe than all the sins since he defiles his, his soul in this world and the world to come and he cannot see the glory of the Shekhinah. Wow. Rav Acha Bar Yashia says in uh, Midrash Gadol, yes, you do have to get married soon, my friend. You need to get married fast. Yeah. Rav Acha says he does not receive life in the future world, so this person stands to die and does not live in the future yeah. world. No Allah Abba. More sources. <laughs> Shuchan Aruch and the Rambam both says, Shuchan Aruch, page 240. Rambam also says it. Old age jumps on him. They get age, they age much faster. Wow. Becomes weaker. Strength leaves him. Wow. His vision goes weak. And also something very interesting that you'll notice from people is very, a lot of people have bad breath. And also they smell quickly. Uh -huh. That's where it's from. Mm. Bad breath is not just from not brushing your teeth. Bad breath and bad smell, bad odor. When you have bad odor coming out of your armpits, it's from wasting seed. Because I can tell you that, you know, again, I'm not, uh, if my sins are for toilet, I'm not saying the Shona Haba myself, but I can tell you before I did Shuva, and after the tshuva, before I did tshuva, my sweat was disgusting. Now I don't even, I barely sweat, and whenever I sweat, it doesn't really smell at all. So, yeah. I know from experience, so this is know. legit. I need to get married. Bezat Hashem, we're going to work on a shidduch for you, my could friend. Could I sit next to you and I can show my, my Bezat Bezat Hashem. Bezat Hashem. Bezat Hashem. maybe they could look. <laughs> <laughs> also, Shulchan Aruch 151 says, uh, Kitsur Shulchan Aruch 151 says, Heaven forbid ch their children can die because of their sin. Or instead of dying, they'll end up becoming evil people. They'll grow up to be evil people. 
Now, if people don't care about their life, and they don't care about their health, there's only one other thing they care about, which is money. It says it's the, it's the foundation of poverty. It causes poverty. The richest man in the world will go broke because of wasting seed. This is something also. Sharek Dusha. There's more. There's a lot more. There's 80 pages of this, but I'm only going to read you a few. Oh. Wow. I'm only going to read you a few. Another few more minutes. Hold tight. Did you mention my name to the... Uh, a person person under the age of mitzvot... A person under the age of mitzvot is not held accountable for his sins. Somebody that's under the age of 13 years old is not held accountable if he makes a sin, if he violates Shabbat, if he uh, eats taref, under, under age 13. 13. Under 13. Under, under 13. Under 13. Under 13. Under 13. Under Before Bar Mitzvah. Before Bar Mitzvah, right. It is, right. Except for one sin. There's only one sin that he does have to pay for. Seed. Wasting seed. Sharek Dusha. This means even children. Children. In the Shla, 100. His prayers are not accepted. He can pray as much as he wants. Not accepted. Oh no, there's more. There's more. There's just, we need to go over a lot of it. There's an amazing book called Tarata Kodesh by Rav Aaron Rata. Are you listening? Tarata Kodesh by Rav Aaron Rata. Has he brought sources from hundreds of places about the Brit, about the Pgama Brit, about wasting seed? He says, just like someone that protects their Brit gets 80 different types of rewards from Hashem. 80 different types of rewards from Hashem for protecting your Brit. But just like that, the one who doesn't gets 80 different types of punishments. Midah keneged Mida. 80 pages. The Zohar says, Zera levatala, wasting seed. Gama brit. A person that wastes seed deserves strange death, an unusual death. You know, people get into uh, their head cut off. Uh, all types of strange death. They deserve strange death just for... Force, putting themselves in a situation where they're allowing themselves to have an erection. Wow. So they're saying there's a uh, connection between like wasting seeds to the mazal of the Vedala. It is his mazal. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Right. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Chazak Ubao. Someone that actually allowed himself to be in a situation that he got an erection without obviously being with his wife, his prayer is not answered for 40 days according to the Zohar. Zera Levatala, listen to this. Zera Levatala brings disaster to the entire world and causes countries to conquer Israel. One guy, little 18-year-old moron, wastes seed, causes Israel to be conquered. The entire nation is one. The entire nation is one. Person that wastes seed does not leave Gehenom. We talked about that before, but it's good to embellish it again. The source is Zohar. Person wastes seed intentionally is not considered Jewish. And his shape in heaven, you know, your shape of your neshama, looks like your body. But a, sh- a person that wastes seed and does not do tshuva before he dies, his shape, when he goes to Shemaim, turns into an animal. Either a dog or a pig. Hmm. 
causes sickness, depression. And it's all parashat pinchas. Zera levatala causes poverty. Poverty chases him. Meaning even if he's making money, eventually poverty is going to chase him. Something's going to happen and he'll lose everything. Doesn't matter. Million dollars he has, five thousand dollars he has, billion dollars, doesn't matter. Waste seed like that, poverty is going to chase him. At any given moment he could lose everything. Lost a lot of money in taxes. Just don't say You're already doing chuva, Baruch Hashem. Just being in the street, doing chuva. <laughs> now let me. This is next part. We'll finish off with this. This part shows you the confusion in this world. Shows you the confusion in this world because I know that nobody here. And I bet you most people that are watching this year, no one has ever heard this. Everyone knows, even the going know who Rabbi Nachman from Breslev is. Mm -hmm. Right? But when you think about Rabbi Nachman from Breslev, what do you think about? The funny looking hats, dancing in the van. The guitar. The, the Breslev movement. The, the little Breslev movement, yeah, the little payers. Okay. All of that is not Rabbi Nachman. Rabbi Nachman was a tzaddik. Rabbi Nachman wrote a lot about Pigamablit, wasting seed. I'm going to give you only a small taste, maybe 2% of a couple of things that we wrote. Not even 2% of what he wrote. Someone who fixed, fixed his Pigamablit. He was wasting seed, but did chuva. It is impossible for him to fall into the desire of money. Meaning, the desire of money is the biggest, other than, other than wasting seed, wasting seed is the most difficult thing to overcome without being married. So, other than that, it's money. People are chasing money, constantly. So someone that overcomes and does tshuva for wasting seed, he'll never fall for money. Money is not going to be his, a, uh, his, he's not going to be attested by money. Okay. Why? If you already passed this test, money is not an issue. Money is not an issue. When someone does tshuva for wasting seed, now, it's almost impossible when someone does chuva in general, it's almost impossible for a person to fix all of their sins. There's many he's going to miss. There's different details. However, when someone does chuva for the Brit, he automatically repairs the damage from all of his sins. Obviously, he has to do his best with everything else. But the point is that even the ones he missed are going to be fixed. This is Likute 1 Torah 29. Someone wants protection. When traveling, it can only happen if he has Shmirat Abrit, keeps his Brit. Someone that violates this uh, bleat, very difficult for them to pray with concentration. Likute 1, Torah 50. Vi someone waste seeds should be very careful from dogs and also from weapons. You should never go uh, shooting guns in the, uh, you know, for fun. Why? Because he's supposed to get a death penalty for what he's doing, so when he puts himself in a situation of danger, that's usually when the mekatregim, those demons will go to uh, the, the, the people that are, the spirits that have a case against him will go to Shemaim and says, look, he's a sinner, he's a sinner, he's a sinner, and he's putting himself in danger. Now, when the Yetzirah, the Satan, has a wife, and 
Chazal says she's worse than him. So bad that you're not even allowed to say her name. And every time you waste seed, it goes to her. And she gives birth to those demons. Every time you waste seed, scientifically they've estimated that it's about 300 million seeds come out of your body with every ejaculation. So there's an, a lot of demons that you're creating and she's in control of them. She will only use them against you, not for you. Mm-hmm. So, so, she... No, yeah, no, so no, 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 She's no. waiting for you. She's to wasting. No, this is, okay, you're, you're thinking I'm talking about a regular woman. No, 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 no. no. Oh, yeah, I understand. This is the Yetzirah's wife. I got you. So every time you waste seed, yeah. she's the one that gets pregnant, and she creates these uh, demons. These demons. Gotcha, gotcha. So much so that she'll even disturb you in your sleep, either by sending demons to mess with you, giving you nightmares, giving you sex dreams... Um, all types of things. She'll torture you during your sleep. That's why the people that waste seed tend to have wet dreams where they have even when they don't want to have waste seed, it still happens. Mm-hmm. This is so bad that every single person, Hashem decided after taking, after creating the world, Chazal says that what does Hashem do since He created the world? It says, Mezavik Zivugim. He brings couples together. Each person has a woman for him. Someone that weighs seed can lose his destined wife. His perfect zivug, he can lose her because he's wasting seed. But by fixing the sin, a person will find, not only can, he can lose his wife because he wasted seed. But if he fixes it, he will find his destined wife and she will not be rebellious against him. Meaning she will love him. But someone that's married and wastes seed will find that he has very difficult time with his wife. She's always going against him. Even when she agrees with him. Her neshama knows that he's evil. She may not know he's wasting seed. He's in a bathroom alone. He's I don't know, with his friends at some disastrous strip club. She doesn't know he's wasting seed. Mm-hmm. But our neshama knows. And because our neshama knows, naturally she's going to go against him. Oh, I want to go to the store. No, why are you going to the store? Why are you going to the store? What? What are you doing at the store? I just want to go groceries. No, no. Why? Why now? No, go tomorrow. It makes no sense, this argument. She's going to argue with him about everything. Everything. Why? Because our neshama knows she can't trust him. Mm-hmm. He's evil. He's wicked. Lekutei 2, Torah 87. Getting drunk causes a person to waste seed. Sefer Amidot 2, Shichrot. Oh, there's a lot. Well, I, can't, I can't read all of it. I'm not going to do all of it now. This is only about everything here is about wasting seed. I read all of it and I highlighted some of the things I wanted to tell you guys. There's a lot more. This is not even, you know, what I'm telling you is not even 1% of what's here. We need to find my match. God bless him. When someone wastes seed, they're wasting their panasa. Money runs away with it. So what's the tikkun? How do you fix it? Okay. Let's explain how bad the sin is. We realize how bad the sin is. When there's a sin that the Gehenom doesn't stop, just stopping by itself, it's not so fast. There's more to it. This is to give us an understanding of what real tshuva is about. We need to know this. A lot of suffering. The Aliyah Kadosh, 
Yarei Kadosh gave us a lot of the secret parts of the Torah, also a lot of the secret parts of how to do tshuva. It says someone that uh, wasted seed one time. Has to fast 84 times. 84? What's the, what do they used to do? Hold on a second. I'll give you guys an answer to it. Hold on. What's the shortcut to these fasts that they used to do? If you fast two days in a row, which is 48 hours straight, no food, no drink, it counts as 27 fasts. But if you fast three days in a row, 72 hours in a row, hold on, I'll give you guys, this is going to get to a point. I know, no, I know no one here is fasting two days in a row. If you fast three days in a row, it counts as 72 hours straight, it counts as 40 fasts. And a person is not allowed to break up those fasts. Meaning that if a person only needs 10 fasts, so he does the two days in a row, he can't use, you know, since he got 27 fasts, he can't use the 17 for something else. He fasted two days, that's it. But the reality of it is, the reality of it is that in our generation, we're too weak to barely fast on Yom Kippur. You tell people that they have fast before Purim, there's a fast before Purim, two days before Purim, there's a oh, fast. I need, I need to stop. You tell people, oh, come on, it's not, it's not mandatory, right? It's not mandatory. It's not like Yom Kippur or Tisha B'Av, right? So, Ariya Kadosh, in his generation, people would fast. This is serious people. We don't have that strength. So there's a different way. From the sunrise until sundown. I need to stop. That's it. Yes, but people still don't do it. Yeah. People still don't do it. The easy fast. Yes, they still don't do it. So, what do we do when we wasted seed? I said, if you don't even know how many times you wasted seed, then you have to, instead of 84 fasts, each one of the, uh, what's, each one of the fasts, you should give tzedakah equivalent to one meal. To one meal. And if you don't know how many times you've done it in your life, you should do it once a year. 84 fast times one meal. So let's say, for example, one meal is, I don't know. 20 bucks. $10, $15, $20. How much does one meal cost? 10 <coughs> Okay, $10. $10, you could buy a meal? A sandwich. Yeah. Okay, you could buy a nice sandwich for $10? Yeah. Okay, so oh. 10 times 84. It's $840 staka for the year. will fix that the uh, uh, wasting seed. But you have to do it every year. And in reality, if you did it a lot, you should do it more than once a year. But, again, this should be uh, uh, possible for somebody to do at least once a year. <clears throat> once a year, you give the $840 to Tzedakah. That is one of the ways of fixing wasting seed. Yeah, but that's one eighty. If you give $840 a year, that's only for one time. Okay. No, no, if you don't, you're only doing it, you're only doing it for that one year. Yes. I'm saying it's one. Yeah, one time. Technically, yes. Eighty four is for one time. Yes, yes. But they even said if somebody doesn't even know how to do it, how many times they've done it, maximum they'll have to do these eighty four fasts is three times. So, so if you did it three years, you're clean. Right. So eight hundred and forty dollars, but this does not count as part of your masil. This does not part of your other part of your other tzedakah. So this is separate. This is purely chuva. One uh, Another time, another thing is, another thing is that, um, tefillah, when you're doing, not only the tefillah, when you're doing an Amidah, and when you're doing Vidui, to think about the times you wasted seed, not only that, but there's something but called, Amidah. in Amidah, in Tefillah okay. think about it, there's certain parts of the, or prayer talks about sins, so you have to, you have to really think about it, and think, tell Hashem you're sorry. When you're doing vidui, when you're doing tachnun, think about that stuff. So, think about it, the wasted seed that you do had. Do it slowly. Do it slowly. Think about it. Say you're sorry. But also there's something called itbodedut. Itbodedut is praying, just not shachrit minchai alvit, praying with your own words, talking to Hashem, which you should be doing anyway, One, you know, once a day for two minutes, for five minutes, for an hour, whatever you have time. 
Um, and during that time, think about the sin and be sorry for it. Um, there's different parts of Tehillim to read called Tikkun HaKlali. Uh, that's uh, yeah, also good for it. And going to the Mikveh. Go to the Mikveh as often as you can, at least once a week. If you've wasted a lot of seed, definitely you should go once a week, uh, if not more. Um, That's before uh, pray or after pray? Whenever you can. Whenever you can. But the biggest, biggest thing is, as part of the tshuva, mm -hmm. is to stop it. Now, how do you stop it? You say we do, and I'm not. Yeah, but you constantly anymore. have. It's like saying to a crackhead, "Stop taking drugs." Oh, He's not going to stop. You, you how learn, you, you learn to run? You don't put your, yourself in a position where. You're right. So what do you do? Okay. First and foremost, you have to clean your house of all the garbage that you have, all the magazines, all the Change movies, life. your television in general. Then you, internet, and then you your television in general, if you have a hard time on the internet, put there's, there's an application that's free I could tell you about. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but I posted it on Facebook. There's an application for free to help you uh, not to go to terrible sites on the internet. Uh, get rid of the magazines, get rid of the movies. Even movies like a, uh, that movies that don't have nudity, but they have attractive people. All movies, you shouldn't be watching that stuff. Newspapers, magazines, all that garbage that's going to constantly remind you of that world, you have to get rid of it. You have to watch your eyes. You can't look at every woman that moves. You can't look at every woman that moves. You want to have a successful marriage? You want to have kedusha? You have to be holy because Hashem is holy. That's what He told us in the Torah. You have to be holy because I am holy. That's what He says. I'm Israel, you're holy. You have to be holy. You can't look at every woman that moves. You have to look at the floor, look at the sky, look at something else. Stop looking at women. Watch your eyes. Watch them on, you know, you can't look at the TV and you also definitely can't look at it on the street. If you don't watch your eyes, what's going to happen? Okay, you don't have the magazines. You don't have the, uh, you don't have the, um, all this other stuff. But you're constantly looking at people at work. So what happens? You go home, you have one of these dreams, or you're bored, which is the next thing. Make sure you're never in a situation where you're bored. Because Chazal says, boredom leads to sin. You sit there, you're bored, you have nothing to do. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. That's what happens. That's real life. Chazal knew real life. Just because they were tzaddikim, doesn't mean they just knew Torah. They knew everything. They knew the entire world. Boredom leads to sin. So, make sure that you have your schedule... Packed with stuff to do. You finish work, you have a shield Torah to go to. You have a book you're going to read. You have a shield you're going to watch. You have soft stuff to do. Don't hang out in the bathroom a lot. Don't stay in the bathroom for a long time. Because, again, you are there. You're there for a while. You're naked. Lead you to it's thoughts. Boring. It's boring. Also, one thing, by the way, that Chazal said, that's Midat chasidut, but it's also something that you're not even allowed to touch that part of your body. You're not even allowed to touch that part of your body. So what do you do? You want to go to the bathroom? You, you can use your sleeve, or you can use a napkin. Or you... I'm serious. I know it's hard. I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds ridiculous. But when someone has a problem... Oh, if you have a problem. If someone has a problem... They have to do whatever they can. And in general, you're not allowed to touch it anyway. That's not, that's not, that's an actual, uh, you're not allowed to touch it. Yeah, you're not allowed to touch it. Unless you're obviously with your wife or something. But the point is that it's uh, in general. Why? Because you're going to put, why this, again, like I told you, put a fence around my fence. And make sure, regardless of whether you're married, single, have a problem, don't have a problem, never ever, ever, under any condition, waste seed. waste seed. And do everything you can not to even look at it. There's really never a reason for you to look at your part. And for whatever reason or another, when you do, that's what happens. Don't look at it. 
It says here. Don't look at so it. So when you when you married, in uh, if you're intimate with your wife, it's different. It's different. If you're if you're married or not married, you're still not. Well, you can't you can't waste it. You have to, Outside of her, yeah, has to be inside. Always has to be inside, inside the wife. of her. So if she's not ready for kids, the only thing you're allowed to use is birth control, or it's these, uh, uh, like, um, uh, what are they called? It's like a candle type of thing that uh, she puts in our uh, uh, private part, and that uh, in essence kills the sperm. But uh, there's a there's an oral pill, and there's something that she puts in that part of her body. There's two things that you're allowed. But but I don't want anyone to think that it's automatically allowed. You are obligated, the first mitzvah in the Torah is pool boo. You're obligated to bring kids to the world. Just because you don't feel like having kids does not mean you're allowed to take, she's allowed to take birth control. There's only specific situations where a rabbi would tell you and a Torah would tell you that you're allowed not to have kids. If you don't have a boy and a girl, you have to continue having kids. Unless there's some type of major health problem. Where a rabbi can say, okay, that's allowed not to have kids. But in general, if you don't have a boy or a girl... You have to continue having kids. Even if you have 15 girls, you still have to continue. And even if you have a boy and a girl, it still doesn't mean you, have to, you could stop. You have to have permission to stop having kids. It's very, very important mitzvah. Just because you don't feel like having more than two kids and a dog does not mean that the Torah allows you not to have the kids. So, again, the whole aspect of limiting birth... It's not as easy as it sounds where I say, oh no, she takes you know, birth control and it's fine. No, it's, there's cer only certain conditions that a wife is allowed to limit the, the, the birth, or and the husband is allowed to limit the birth. And by the way, in the Gemara, it actually says that even though it sounds to us, and even pretty much most of uh, people, that only men are, uh, should be careful of wasting seed, in the Gemara, it actually says women have to be careful of it too, because in, it's, it's possible for them to even take seed out of their body, which means that even if the guy tried not wasting seed, she could waste his seed, and she's uh, sinning. And even if she knows that he's actually going to sin, she shouldn't allow him to do it. She's part of the sin. So, wasting seed, as you've gotten it for the last, I don't know, half hour or so, it's a very, very serious sin. And what I told you is not even 1% of it. So Rabbi Nachman from Breslev, which is part of the information I got is from him, part of it is from Mara, Zohar, and several other places. It's not all fun and games and walking, you know, and driving around in vans and dancing. The real Chassidu, the real, the real Torah, the real, uh, you know, Kedushah that he had, that's what he wrote about. He didn't write about, uh, you know, going around in uh, vans. That's actually, you know, desecrating his name, is Ken. Mm -hmm. People think it's just partying games. No, the tzaddikim were real tzaddikim for a reason. If you listen to the shurim by Rabbi Arush, or a, uh, um, a laser bro Rabbi Laser Brody, the leaders of the Breslov movement right now, you see that they talk serious business. They talk about serious Torah. Don't talk about dancing in the, on, on top of vents. <laughs> go to Uman. So, the... serious tzaddikim? Yes, you're supposed to be happy and so on. But what they wrote about, what they write about, this is what they write about. Why? Because this is the most important stuff in life. This brings, if we don't follow the Torah, it brings disaster to the world. When we follow the Torah, we have all the blessings in the world. Unfortunately, with the exception of two rabbis that I know of, Rabbi Mizrahi and Rabbi Alon Nava, no one in English that I know of, maybe somebody did, but that I know of, no one in English has spoken about wasting seed. Mm -hmm. as a, uh, and put it on YouTube. Maybe they spoke about it privately, maybe they put it on YouTube, but I just never saw it. But I've looked, I've looked really, really hard. Nobody speaks about wasting seed, the significance of it, how bad it is, and so on. So, in Hebrew there's a few. Okay. Yeah. But in English... Very, very rare. Very and unfortunately, this is a sign of how weak our generation is. I don't even necessarily fault the rabbis. Uh, it's really because the crowd is so weak. The people of this generation are so weak that most people, by the time they hear the first five minutes of the wasting seat part, will probably shut off the lecture. If they survive this far, then they're serious. You guys survive this far, it means you're serious about Shuvah. 
This is not easy stuff to hear. Same thing that we talk about about uh, about Shabbat. But right. again, just like this 80, 80 uh, blessings, there's 80 curses. We need to know both of them. It's not the Shem. We all do tshuva. Both the Jews, the non-Jews, the entire world gets closer to Hashem, brings the Mashiach soon, and we're ready for him. And now I'm serious about getting married. It's not the Shem. Anybody have any questions? Amen. <laughs> 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 <laughs>